Hey everybody, I'm Daniel from Space Dock, and this week's episode of Ex Astris was in fact written by the designer of this, I'm sure you'll agree, gorgeous ship, that being Star Trek Online's Thomas Morone. So big thanks to him for this fantastic script, and I hope you'll enjoy the video. Initially conceived as a D7 killer, the Giorgio class battlecruiser represents a path not taken for Starfleet ship design in the late 23rd century. As early as the 2260s, Starfleet was experimenting with the concept of a next generation cruiser to bolster a fleet decimated by Takuvma's war. Even during the begrudging peace that followed, it was clear to Starfleet planners that the Klingons would be an enduring existential threat to the Federation. While the venerable Constitution and Miranda classes saw extensive refit programs, the Advanced Starship Design Bureau was tantalised by emerging next generation propulsion theories that could redefine the scale of warp propulsion, named transwarp by warp field physicists. Early experiments into applied transwarp physics began in the late 2250s with the top secret experimental hull USS Repulse. While only a few were built, Starfleet engineers learned important lessons that would inform the design of next generation Federation starships. The ASDB was split into two schools of thought, the more optimistic and scientifically oriented traditionalists, and the newer, more hawkish Marshallists. The Marshallists saw Starfleet's catastrophic and near total defeat during Takuvma's war as a wake-up call, and pushed for parity with Klingon warfighting capabilities. The traditionalists were not against modernization, but also maintained that both Starfleet's roots and its future lie in the versatile multi-role cruiser as its ship of the line as demonstrated by the success of the Constitution-class USS Enterprise. After lively debate and during the rapid escalation in tensions with the Klingons in the late 2270s and early 2280s, Starfleet planners decided to test both directions with its Fleet 2000 initiative. Both philosophies would see their ideal realised. For the traditionalists, the USS Excelsior would feature the first declassified implementation of transwarp engines on a large and capable multi-role heavy cruiser frame. For the Marshallists, the USS Giorgio would represent the heaviest battleship yet constructed by Starfleet, intended to best the Klingon's ship of the line, the Katinga-class battlecruiser, in single combat. Both the Giorgio and Excelsior would see an initially limited production run, with periodical and thorough evaluations to determine how well they answered the need of Starfleet's next-generation starship. Even as the Excelsior quickly became mired in its own controversy, the Giorgio was a political lightning rod. The ship, and thus the class of any sister ships to follow, was provocatively named after Captain Philippa Giorgio, who was one of the first Starfleet casualties of Takuvma's crusade. Any subsequent ships would also be named after Starfleet officers who gave their life in service during that war. As soon as the Giorgio was christened, it became clear that the ship was a symbol to the Klingon Empire and to the rest of the galaxy. We have not forgotten what you did to us, and we will not let you do it again. Such a strident spirit was antithetical to many in the Federation's halls of power, but as equally politically motivating was the real and present danger posed by the Klingon Empire, furious over the recent Genesis incident. Indeed, several small noble houses hoping to improve their stature by scoring a big victory against the Federation went rogue in the months following the destruction of Genesis. Several border skirmishes between Federation and Klingon starships ensued. This aggression, though officially disavowed by the Klingon High Council, was enough to push the heavily armed Giorgio through to production. There was little else that it could be other than a warship. With eight torpedo launchers, eight heavy phaser cannons, two mine layers, and 14 dual-pulsed phaser banks, it was the most heavily armed Starfleet ship for its tonnage. Designed to be outnumbered, half of the Giorgio's heavy armaments are pointed aft, meant to engage any birds of prey or raptors that may try to outflank the vessel. All this firepower came at a cost. Because of the energy infrastructure built to support its phaser armament, the Giorgio required a massive engineering staff, and a lucky shot by an enemy could disrupt its complex EPS grid and quickly disable almost half of its combat power. To address this, Starfleet engineers fit the Giorgio with a cyclical polarity modulator, which provided a small but dramatic boost to the ship's structural integrity field and shield energy absorption. The modulator was built with an internal power source, so it could only be activated once per engagement, and did not draw from the ship's main EPS grid, but it was designed to give the Giorgio enough staying power to weather an initial enemy attack, and then retaliate with its own devastating barrage. Its warp engines were rated fast, and while not fully transwarp designs like its Excelsior competition, they could travel at higher warp factors longer than its predecessors. Unfortunately, during a yellow or red alert, so much energy was required by its tactical systems 
but the Giorgio's subspace field generators received less power and thus took longer to spin up. While several Block 1 Giorgios were built and performed well during deployment along the Klingon neutral zone, the fate of the class and the future of Starfleet shipbuilding philosophy was sealed with the explosion of the Klingon moon Praxis and the historic Kittimer Accords that followed. A condition of the historic Accords were the demilitarization of both the Klingon Imperial Navy and the Federation Starfleet. The treaty stipulated a very hard cap on tonnage and military capability for both navies, and thus the Giorgio as a concept was shelved. The existing ships of the class underwent extensive refits into long-range perimeter action cruisers and survey vessels. With their heavy weapons gutted and their power grid simplified, they had much more warp power to work with than their Block 1 counterparts. They saw some success over the years, but were almost entirely phased out by the third decade of the 24th century. While the Giorgio was the road not taken, it is important to note its role in Federation history, and also important to acknowledge that the lessons learned in building the Giorgio did inform the success and longevity of its competition. There can be no doubt that the miracle at Kitima and the sudden obsolescence of the Giorgio was the best possible outcome for the galactic community. But as belligerent as it was, the Giorgio still represented important Starfleet values at its core. The capacity for understanding and self-reflection, the will to change and improve, and the determination to meet any challenge that may lie ahead.